come today. My name is Brita Lind and I'm with Arcus Advertising in Regina and we've been working for a long time with um, SAS Galleries. Plus I'm a, an art buyer and I, and I love buying art and uh, I bought art online and more so recently too. Um, I'm pleased to be the moderator today. Uh, before we introduce our panelists, I would like to mention that Art Now Fine Art Fair, we are physically coming to you today on Treaty 4 lands, and Treaty 4 is home to the traditional territory of the Cree, the Soto, Assiniboine, Dakota, Lakota, Nakota peoples, as well as the homeland of the Métis. Okay, so this session is talking about the shift that's happened. Now, buying art online has, you know, certainly not just been happening the past six months, but it has sped up like significantly a big shift. So we're going to be talking about that today. And, and we have with three incredible gallerists um, here that span like the, the width of Canada. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm going to say to the people who are listening, you are part of this. So at the bottom of your screen, you're going to see uh, a Q&A. So you can be asking questions throughout. Um, and we'll get to them as, as when we can, as when we're talking about things. We will be posting information uh, in the chat area as well. So if we're mentioning a website or if there's some sort of mention of different things, uh, you don't have to go rushing around to find it. It'll be right there in the chat. Um, and there's going to be some polling. So if you want to take part in some fun polls about buying art, it would be great. And we'll, we might just we'll share the results and go through them as, as part of the conversation. So, all right, uh, enough about all that kind of admin stuff. I want to get to introducing these incredible gallerists. So I'm going to start with uh, right in our hometown right here, which is Gina Fafard with Slate Gallery. Can you introduce us uh, to yourself and your gallery? Hello, I'm Gina Fafard, I'm the owner of Slate Fine Art Gallery and one of the participants in Art Now this year. So I do have a booth online on the SAS Gallery site. And um, Slate Gallery has been open since 2013, and we just moved to a new location about a year and a half ago, um, representing almost 40 artists, most of them from Saskatchewan, not all of them based here, but some connection to Saskatchewan, not necessarily on purpose, but that's just the way that it worked out. We have so many wonderful artists here at home, so it ended up being in Saskatchewan focus. Right. Well, thanks. Well, thanks for being on the panel. Um, I'm going to move now to, I'm going to go west. I'm going to go to Joe. Joe Bembridge, will you, from Merrick, uh, Gallery Merrick, will you talk about your gallery? Absolutely, yeah. Um, so I am here in beautiful Nanaimo on Vancouver Island. Gallery Merrick has been open for just over two and a half years. Um, before this, I was a sales associate at uh, Canada Host Gallery, and that's where I got my background in art and art sales. And then I took the leap of faith to open my own gallery, and it's super fun and uh, having a great time. Uh, we represent emerging and established artists. We really kind of celebrate both um, platforms. My roster is primary, is more female artists than uh, male artists. And we're really working on our people of color, LGBTQ artists so that there's a platform for them. And yeah, I'm so excited to be here. So excited to talk about the new way of buying art with all of you, because that is, that is kind of the new normal that is happening. So for sure. Right on. Thanks, Joe. Okay, last but not least, we're heading east. Oh, I didn't even mean to rhyme that. I'm sorry. And so with Cheryl Bell with 14 Bells Gallery, go. I'm Cheryl Bell from 14 Bells, and I'm here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And we opened, I say we, it's me, but we opened in uh, 2017. And I don't know how I didn't know this, but I also got my start in Canada House Gallery in Banff with... <laughs> Uh, so Barb and Eric and uh, Peter and Marika have uh, their hands all across the country now because that's where I got my training. I was, but I was there probably about 20 years ago. So that's uh, where I got my start. But I opened this gallery in the historic Hyderstone district in Halifax in 2017. Okay. I've got to ask Cheryl, uh, 14 Bells, what, where does the name come from? 14 Bells is not, my name is Bell, but there is, uh, right here in this area of Halifax was uh, devastated in 1917 by the Halifax explosion. 
And right here in this neighborhood is a, a monument that has bells in it that ring on the hour and there's 14 bells in it. So it's just sort of a nod to the neighborhood and the history of the neighborhood. But it turns out that there's 14 bells in my family until somebody dies, gets married or has a baby, we're 14. Okay, right on, you're on point. Uh, fantastic. Okay, so we, uh, uh, it's okay, Alana, who's on the keyboards, Alana and Zyla, who's with SAS Galleries and Art now, uh, to release the hounds and do the first poll and put it out there if you can. Um, but the first question is, you know, so we have, um, okay, so there it is, there's the first poll that's out. Um, all right, so people, Let's talk about buying art online. So did, um, what are you seeing? What are the trends that you are seeing um, and in buying art, li art online right now? So I'm gonna start with Joe. What do you, you know, have you always been doing it or did you have to like turn up the volume? Totally turned up the volume. Um, when we were, like I was always on Instagram and um, Facebook, but it wasn't my forte. I'm not a very tech savvy person and things like that. Um, but I invested in actually paying somebody uh, in Vancouver who runs my social media. And I did that in January and that kind of started this happening. And then the lockdown happened and like our whole industry shifted, you know, like I think, I don't know about the other gallery owners, but initially when they were saying, you know, businesses are going to be closed for nine months to a year. I was like, what? How? Like, that's, that can't happen. <laughs> we can't do this in that kind of a situation. So I had a few dark days once I locked the door of my gallery and I went home and I was just like, art is over. Art galleries are done. Like, what's going to happen? And then a few days after that and a couple of vodkas, um, I picked myself up and I said, reinvent. Like, figure this out. And I had shows planned for that time. And I just kind of went, how can I flip this into a silver lining? Because that's life, right? We get thrown punches and you just got to bounce back. So what we did, which really shifted my business is, um, and like Cheryl, I'm a one person operation. So well, I, I'm lying. I do have other people here, but I, I've always said we just the royal. We. I, I do too, because I think the artists are part of it. And yeah, exactly. It, they, <laughs> it's primarily a one man show over here. I do have offshoots. But anyways, so I had this idea of what if we did, if we kept our shows going, because some of the artists were like, well, let's postpone. And I was like, but postpone till when or postpone till what? Like there was no and in sight and so i shifted to do live shows like facebook live and instagram live and i love it it is so fun uh the first show was with trisha oldfield and the two of us said you know what if we sell two we'll break even and and we'll be happy by the end of it we sold nine and so we did these live shows I had somebody in here wearing a mask and holding two phones, so Facebook and Instagram. And I was able to walk people through the show and get up close with the cameras. I'd back away, the camera person would get close and they were able to see the details and I was able to talk about the details. And um, we, it kind of turned into like a telethon meets like fabulous home shopping network meets <laughs> art extravaganza. And my background is in theater performance. So I kind of treat this gallery as my stage. And we just had so much fun. And so from there, that model is now my new model. And I love it. Like getting up close, like a, we encourage people to, you know, go to their favorite, like get takeout from their favorite restaurant to support the restaurants, get their favorite libations. And then you get about a half hour session and, you get so much more information because at the openings, everybody's just, oh, love your necklace. Oh, so good to see you. How are the kids? You know, and you're actually not getting a lot of information about the art. And it's not actually coming from us who as gallerists, if I can speak highly of what we do, a lot of the artists say that sometimes we talk about their art better than they talk about their art because we spend all day talking about their art where they spend all day creating their art. So you get kind of even more value out of these online shows 
because um, you really get a good sense of what's happening. And we're on a way bigger platform. Like the, the purchases that were happening were happening from all over Canada and the States. And so I kind of love it. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, yeah. our, our, thank you, Joe. Our first poll is coming in. And right now it's trending. Um, have you ever bought art online before? Um, it, we're at about 67% of uh, no, that people haven't. And what is your comfort level? We're sitting at about 56% uh, um, total beginner. And, and then, well, actually, if you look with emerging, we're looking at over about 78%. So, um, so there's people here, they haven't bought online. And there's some of the reasons is uh, what I'm seeing from the poll is like, I, I need to see the art in person. So let's talk about, you know, let's talk about that. Um, what do you say? And I'm, I'm going to say, you know, to Gina, start with you. What do you say to someone who hasn't, they're not able to see the art in person? Um, yeah, what can you tell a customer who's a little bit nervous about buying art online? Because it's always been such a, a visceral thing where we're there. Mm, I think, well, I'm, I'm finding, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people buying People that are shopping online are buying from the more established of our artists. So they're familiar with um, the quality of their work. And so when they're seeing an image online, they, they do have a pretty good idea of what, what they're going to get when, they, when the piece shows up in person. So even if they're just seeing it on an image on the internet, they feel pretty confident. So yeah, there is definitely that other aspect of um, you know, when it's an artist that you're not familiar with. Um, but, you know, we can get pretty good representations. We can get a lot of detail in those photographs. And um, as you asked me earlier about the 3D tour, not, sorry, not on this call, last time, <laughs> that, that's what's really been when helping me reach and connect with people is that I've been taking, um, getting a photographer to come in and do a 3D tour of every new exhibition that I have in the gallery. So not only are they seeing just the photograph of the piece on my website, they're actually getting to move around in the space and, you know, even just seeing the, the dimensions of the work and getting a, an idea of how it fits into the space and how it works amongst the other pieces. I think that really does, um, really does help somebody get a, a better idea of the work. Thanks, Gina. I know that we'll put in the chat like an example of the 3D tour that, um, that Gina is talking about. And I've actually gone through one of your tours and it's really great because there's like focal points on the art where I can actually like zoom in and get really quite close like I'm there. Um, and so that's, that has helped me. So we've got two different, you know, you know, ways here, which is, you know, for Joe, Joe, you're talking about the art and the, you know, and really talking about the artist and those pieces. And for Gina, you're, you're creating experience where people can get in as, as close. And there's also a trust component where it's like, hey, we're going to take photographs so that you can see the brush strokes because that's something that I know I really like. So Cheryl, I'm going to say to you, like, what would you say to um, people who haven't bought online yet? What do you say to re reassure people? Well, I think uh, to reiterate what Gina said is that start with artists that you know that you have seen in person because you already have a confidence level there, you know the quality. Um, further to that, um, you can start with gallery, galleries that you know, that you have a trusting relationship with. And I would say also to start slow, I mean we have everything, like people can click right through and, and buy on my website and I never ever talk to them. That, but if you're nervous, then don't do that. I, I, I would probably guess that none of us are that busy that some they can't answer an email or a phone call to send you more pictures or different angles or to answer concerns or questions that you have. So if you're not comfortable doing the full on click through purchase it, get it shipped, send a message on Facebook, send an email, phone, and have a conversation so that you can, you can trust the person on the other end of the line. So it, like when we talk about buying art online, it's not like ordering a book on Amazon. You, you can have a personal experience with the gallery. We're not, we're not, I wish we were, but we're not high volume that we're, we're processing 200 orders a day and we don't have time to talk to you. Right. 
and we can we can we can help you through any questions that you have. Are you all finding that that, that that there's an experience that's happening online and then you're ending up on the phone with people and emailing and doing those sorts of things? Is that a common experience among the three of you? I, I started my day today with a client asking for videos of a certain artist's work and that was the first thing that I did is I came in, I took the videos, I went, got details, sent it to the client on Instagram and yeah, like it's almost like we're in some ways, like I, I'm surprised that the poll for the participants that are there, that are here, it's so good that you're here because I'm. this is gonna hopefully give you the confidence that like exactly what Cheryl was saying is we're, we're not high volume. Like <laughs> we've got time for you. We, we definitely have time for you, you know? And so even like what I sent this morning uh, to the client, I just followed it up. If there's any other details, if there's anything else that I can send you, I, I do FaceTimes with people so I'll, I'll FaceTime with them through the gallery. Um, like, so I think in some ways, because a lot of people then turn around and say, oh, well, I don't do Instagram. I don't do Facebook. I don't do these things. And in some ways I'm kind of like, we're adapting. So we also need you to adapt, you know? So this is an encouragement for people that are like, well, I don't like to do those things. Then it's like, well, then we don't really have a way to help you or to communicate with you. So in some ways it's kind of like, let's get on board, you know, like get on board with us because we're, we're changing every month our, our from, from Gina doing her 3D tours to Cheryl making sure that she's available to me doing a gazillion Instagram posts. Like we're all, we're all adapting. So come on in, join, join the ride. <laughs> right on. Um, in the in the poll, one of the um, uh, pieces that uh, the hesitations um, is what if I don't like it? So 33% of the people are saying, what if I don't like it? What happens? So um, let's let's talk about let's talk about that. Cheryl, do you what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I think that's something that you're going to have a conversation with beforehand. I mean, I've, I've found that I've been selling a lot of things online or at least starting a sale online and there's still a lot of local people. So if, if I was setting that up with someone locally, then I, I would have a, a, some kind of commitment or plan in place mm -hmm. before that convert, before I shipped it or delivered it or whatever. For shipping, I mean, if someone was really, really nervous, I think it would just be on a case-to-case -case basis. If, if there was some way we could manage to ship it back properly and that sort of thing, then I think I'd speak for a lot of the galleries in that, you know, it's a case-by-case -case basis. You make it, you make it work. And I think also, and Joe will probably know this from the training, if you did the training that I started at Canada House, <laughs> you want to, you want to sail that uh, wears well. So if someone is, that nervous and they're really not committing, I might do the wrong thing and say this may be not the piece for you. You 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 want to sell them something that they're 99.9% .9 confident on. That that's just my philosophy. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't ship somebody something if I felt they were just trying it to see if it matched and then want to send it back. Right. I, yeah, I, I, I would say that that's the wrong piece for you. You, you have to find one that you're, you're happy with. Yeah. And, and really the experience of art buying, like when, um, so I bought um, from Slate Gallery, from Gina, um, and Gina, you all, you've always been very clear. It's like, hey, you know, if you don't like it, you can always bring it back, those sorts of things, but you do want to, <laughs> or maybe, sorry. <laughs> There was a glitch in the, in the system there. You didn't hear that. But you want, the person, you want the person to be happy. And if someone isn't happy, like you want the art to have a good home, right? Um, I, want, I want people to be sure before they leave the gallery. I, it is a difficult thing as far as returning work because you're selling on consignment. And if yeah. someone comes back after you've already paid the artist, then basically by returning it, you're asking the gallery to purchase the work. So it's not, it's not really a thing that can can easily be done. Um, so what we do usually is we'll, we'll let people try it in their home before they purchase. Okay. We'll do a delivery, we'll take, we'll I'll bring it to your house and hang it on your wall. 
and let you live with it for the weekend and see if you're happy. Yeah. Because it doesn't, need to be, it doesn't need to be a decision that you make before you go ahead with the purchase. It's just um, returns are, are just too difficult to do. Okay, I'm sorry I said I'm I'm sensed on on me. Oh man, we could talk later, and I'll I'll I, I'll buy you a coffee and apologize more. No <laughs> Some people have been, um, you know, they're on the poll. There is some concern about shipping, you know, uh, you know, this uh, amazing piece of art is on your front step or, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Um, can you guys talk about how do you, how do you mitigate that? How can you help people who are like listening um, with that, with that fear? I'll open uh, well, I, I will say that for me anyway, the risk is 100% on me. So I I that would never be on the, um, on the buyer. And that is the combination. I mean, it's an insurance policy I have that's ridiculous, but necessary. And um, yeah, and you can't control the shippers, but knock on wood, it's generally, it's very, very rare that something goes, gets damaged or goes astray. I mean, we're just careful. And once again, it's not usually high volume either. So um, yeah, I've had very good luck and I just tell the people that it, that it's on me, you know, so okay. there is, there is no worry. And yeah, they're at, just through the past few months, just volume has been up for the shippers. So it's maybe been a little bit more sketchy than it would have been in the past, but once again, knock on wood, everything's got there. Um, Maybe a few days later, but it gets there. Okay, Joe, how about you? What do you what do you tell your customers? Because you all of you are shipping across Canada and farther. Yeah, like uh, we did a shift this summer where we actually uh, encouraged shipping by doing twenty five dollar shipping any on any size piece anywhere in Canada. So that was my way of saying we've got a plan, we've got it worked out by the art. Um, so some people took advantage and got a big one. Again, this case by case basis is so bang on. Like I talk to my clients about their neighborhood. Um, you know, a client in Fernie compared to a client uh, in Calgary downtown, it's a totally different um, kind of situation. And I work with different shippers in different ways. Sometimes I'll do Canada Post. If it's a certain type of shipment, sometimes I'll do you know, FedEx, if it's a certain kind of shipment. So again, we, we do the work for you. And like Cheryl, knock on wood, everything has arrived. Everything has been fabulous. Everything is good. And again, that's kind of our job. So don't let that stress you out because that's our stress. We, we <laughs> take that on and we deal with it. And like Gina knows from doing, you know, they do big, big, big shipments we find these solutions for you. You wait at home and it comes. And so we make sure that it works. So don't have that stress. That's what we wake up at four in the morning going, oh my God, I hope that package. <laughs> <You know? laughs> really, truly. But again, that's part of the service. Like these are luxury items. I always say that these are luxury items and we treat them like that. And we treat the shipping process like that. And we work with companies that we know treat these products like the luxury products that they are. So, buy art. <laughs> there we go. Really we had, go ahead. No, go ahead. Really good art shipping companies out there that they, all that they do is ship our work and nothing else. And they have um, the means to do it. They have climate controlled trucks so that nothing happens to the artwork in, um, in process and and everything is insured while it's on the way. So you really don't have to be too concerned with shipping like we're, we're going to get to. Okay. Um, in the question about what is your biggest hesitation to buying art, um, the, uh, one, uh, there was one person said uh, that I will buy too much art online. Okay, what would you say to that person? <laughs> Not possible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a solution. I have a client that I have now started shipping things to her work so that her family doesn't know So because she got in trouble for it at home, but now I have her work address. So it's all solved. There's always a solution. There is always a solution. <laughs> These people are our favorite people. Yeah. Because <laughs> we're it's the same. Like, I don't know a single gallerist that doesn't 
by an outrageous amount of art ourselves. It's like an ongoing process. It's like, so that person should call all of us. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's, uh, there was mention of emerging artists um, and we're talking maybe, you know, that people are, might be feeling more comfortable with the artists that they know, but still there's emerging artists who uh, your galleries represent and are, are supporting and things like that. What can we tell, um, because those artists also need to make a living and also you have curated these artists for, um, you know, for buyers. What can you tell um, people who are hesitant about buying an emerging artist? How can you uh, assuage them on this? Um, I'm just gonna open the floor and you guys can jump in. I'll go. Uh <laughs> Emerging is a big platform for me that I celebrate every single Canadian iconic artist that we admire and look up to and celebrate. They were emerging at some point, you know? Joe Fafard was an emerging artist at some point. And if people didn't get on board and support him as an artist and collect him, he would not be on the scale of the work that and the, and the celebration that we have. And I love the stories when you hear about people going, oh, I got a Robert Genn when he was just starting out. I got a Norvell Morriso when he was just starting out. And so it's almost like buy what you love always is the philosophy, but also get behind an artist and, and, and be their, their supporter and be their backer because they might be the next superstar and you got them early and you get to say, I had this P, I bought this 30 years ago when this person was just starting out. And so even if it doesn't, isn't an established name that you know their style and, and exactly like we're saying, like when you look at a Grant Lear online and you've seen a Grant Lear in person, you know, you know what you're gonna get, you know the brush strokes, you know all that stuff, but sometimes taking a little leap of faith, because let's be honest, the price point of emerging artists is completely different than the established artists. So it might be somewhat of a leap of faith, but you could be supporting and encouraging the next Canadian art superstar. So I have a 50-50 split in the gallery of emerging and established. I celebrate both because the established artists need to be supported as well. But, oh, I, like, it, it breaks my heart when I hear artists telling the stories about going to galleries, asking for representation, and being told, well, when you have representation, come and see us. You know, it's a vicious circle. They come out of art school, or they are self-taught, and there's no platform for them. There's no space for them to, to get that launch. And I think we lose a lot of artists in Canada that, get to the point where they're like, what's the point? You know, because they, they need that that space to to flourish. So I'm so team emerging artists. And yeah, if if at the end of the day, like we're kind of saying, if if you do get a piece and it's pretty rare that I hear somebody being like, I I just hate it. I opened the box and I hated it. <laughs> That's impossible. You've done enough work looking at it, talking to us, all that. You're gonna love it. They're all treasures. And again, you get to see that person's career go and move and shape. And us gallerists, we talk. Like if I've got a, a an artist that I think is on fire, I can call Cheryl and I can say, hey, Cheryl, I think this person would be a great fit for your roster. I'd love to see them, you know, represented in the East. And that's how we kind of work together is, and then that artist is in two galleries. And then a gallery hears about that. And then that artist is in three galleries, you know? And then this new fabulous talent is, is on our, 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 our spectrum of, of galleries in Canada. So this is like part of like the, the experience of buying art online. I, if I want to like boil it down to one word, I'm going to say it comes down to trust. And, and, and actually any time that, that we're buying art, even when we're physically in a gallery, it does come down to trust. And, um, and so then what can you tell the people who are listening today is like, why trust a gallery? Why trust on an emerging artist? Or why trust on this piece? Um, I'm gonna open it up to, you know, Cheryl or Gina, like do you have any thoughts on that? 
Well, I don't, I don't think you can ask somebody to trust someone right off the bat. And if, if you're doing any transaction that's important to you or a large transaction, you're going to do your research. So it's just like anything else. You look at reviews, you look at their social media. Social media has a personality and you're going to connect with it or you're not going to connect with it. You're going to see in the community, um, the art, uh, the gallery community and the art buying community in Canada isn't that giant that there's not, you might find some connection of a, you know, a friend or a colleague or someone that has done business with that gallery or that artist and, and you can get that review. So no, you don't, you don't gain the trust automatically. And, and like I said, don't, don't take that leap of faith and click the buy button. If you're not comfortable, talk to someone on the phone and, and see, have, ask the questions that is making you not trust and, and see if they have the right, right answers for you. I'll ask a gallerist, um, why did you, why did you become this? Why did you start a gallery? Like, I like to hear the story of, of how that happened and that, you know, and what their background is and that helps me, I know as a buyer. Um, I know Gina, like for you, like, and I know for all the gallerists, really you're curating on the behalf of, of your, you know, clientele. Um, so, you know, what can you, what do you say to uh, buyers about um, how you go about selecting your artists and who they are? A lot of it is just really instinct. I mean, it's, um, I mean, selecting the artist for the gallery, it's, it's partially just based on how much I love their work. I think that's where it starts. Um, and you get some sort of sense of where their career is going or, you know, how much experience they've had so far. And, and I, I also have emerging artists in the gallery. I think it's really important to do so, but quite often they don't have any experience with how their world works. So um, there's your opportunity to teach them a little bit about it. Um, but I, I do I do think it, it is really important to bring them in. I mean, I, I can't imagine the gallery, I mean, separating those two things. If you have just the established artists at one gallery and just the emerging at, at another, like that gallery with just emerging artists, how are they gonna make it work? It's just, it would just be too difficult. So it, it makes perfect sense to bring them together. Um, but I might've gone off topic from your question. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Oh, good. I adore you. Um, I know, Cheryl, I know from looking at, you know, um, the experience that customers have with 14 Bells Fine Art Gallery is one of the things you have is like through Instagram and through the platform you're using that people can very easily see the artwork on their own walls. Can you talk about that process and how it works? Um, yeah, so I have, I've, I've wanted it forever, and it's like something I imagined, and then all of a sudden it, it existed, so I put it on my website, and it's, it's called Picture It, so uh, I'm on a Shopify, Shopify platform, which allows a lot of different things to add on, and so you can download a picture of your room, and then put the painting on your wall. And, and see how that works. I mean, it's not as great as having it in your house, but it gives you a little bit of scale um, and that sort of thing. It, it, and uh, I've got really, really positive feedback for that. I mean, it's a tool that I can use when I'm dealing with my existing customers. You know, I go to hang a painting and they have uh, other empty walls. You know I'm taking a picture of those walls, <laughs> going back to the gallery and popping pictures onto to the wall. I've been trying to fit something above this woman's fireplace for six months. So, you know, I just keep trying and, and, and putting things on, especially in times like this where, where the, um, you know, the home visits and the gallery visits are drastically limited. It's a, it's a good tool to have. Yeah, I've, I've, I've used it. And I have also noticed on Art Now Online on some of the pages that there's actually, uh, you can see the artwork in relation to a person on the wall when going mm -hmm. through the galleries on the, the current Art Now Fair. And that was really helpful because when the piece comes on my screen, I, I'm like, oh, that looks like a big piece. Uh, or, uh, and in my mind, I suddenly attach a size to it. Even if this, even though the size is written, I have a perception. And so it, it helps me get the scale of the piece, which is very helpful 
Um, anyway, so that's something that's helped me buying online. I want to point out to our people who are uh, here, our participants, thank you for being here. There is a Q&A portion. So if there's any questions that are coming up for you that we haven't addressed or that's uh, a burning desire, you're like, oh, that's what I really want to know. You can put it in the Q&A anytime. It's not um, interrupting us at all. But um, okay, so if, if we had to like kind of talk about just generally the advice we'd give um, to someone who's um, going into the new place of, of buying art online. What advice in, in kind of a nutshell would you, would you give? Well, I want to just touch on um, what Cheryl was saying uh, in regards to trust. Um, what Gina, Cheryl, and I, and every other gallerist do is we handpick every artist that is in our gallery. And we also handpick every piece that is in our gallery. Uh, all galleries are a little bit different, but like artists send me images and I select from those images which pieces are coming into the gallery. I don't just take everything that the artist wants to, to pass off. So we are also doing the work for you as the buyer that everything that's coming into our house, we stand behind. Like there isn't a single piece in my gallery that I don't adore. I truly adore. And I think that that's what drove me to become a gallerist is that when I was working at another gallery, I, I didn't stand behind all of the work that was there because it wasn't my vision. It wasn't my selection process. And so sometimes I'd have to put on a real, I love it, it's, it's fantastic. You know, I don't have to do that anymore. You know, this, everything that is in my house, I love because I would have it in my house. So again, I kind of love describing that we are a brand. Like uh, Cheryl's brand is different than my brand, than is different than Gina's brand. And again, we have this amazing platform of social media and things like that. And so get behind a brand that you like. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. You know, there's a lot of times people come in and they say, oh, who's the owner? And I'm like, well, that's me. And they're like, really? And you're like, w why is that weird? Um, but I think you get behind the gallery that you believe in and then you let us work with you to make sure that when you do open that box, you're like, oh my God, it's even better than they described it. I love it even more. So again, Trust us, trust our brand, trust the work that we do. I've never met a gallerist that doesn't love what they do. We love what we do. So get behind the passion and the energy and the brand. And my biggest compliment is when people come in here and kind of say, wow, the, the artwork is kind of all over the place. I'm like, yes, because we're not just a landscape gallery or we're not just figurative the fact that it is kind of like abstract next to a deer, next to a landscape, next to bees, you know, these, these pieces we've all curated for you and, and we love it. So again, I think it is to kind of trust the person, get, be, get behind, trust us as much as you can. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Cheryl, um, we were talking about what, if you had to encapsulate the ad advice that you would give to someone who is thinking about making that leap and is looking at it and might be a little bit hesitant, what would be your advice that you would give? Um, well, I think we've, we've been talking all this time as, as if we are packing stuff up and shipping them, and that happens, and that's great because none of us live in giant markets, Halifax, Nanaimo, Saskatchewan in general, you know, they're not giant population markets. So we do uh, rely on shipping, but I, I find that the buying online, you can broaden it out um, to even just narrowing down what you want and then physically going to the gallery and getting it. Um, so um, I am always impressed and shocked and very happy when people come into the gallery and they know my website, back and forth and upside down they'll say where is this one i'm like what one and they're like this one and they know it and they know where it is and they've seen it and they know it and um well when we talk about trust like 
my my career mid Canada House and here was I was a used car salesperson, so you can trust me. And but <laughs> to do a um, an analogy, when we when I was in the in the car business and just the way that buying has changed in general is that the stat that we had, and I'm probably going to get the numbers a little wrong, but people used to go to five dealerships and, and drive 12 cars before they bought a car. But by the time I left the business in 2016, people would go to 1.2 dealerships and drive two cars because they had been online and they narrowed down what they wanted and they found out all the details and they'd seen the prices. The prices, I think that's very important, have all your pricing details so there's no trust there's no trust issues with you made up the price the price is there 24 7 you know what the price is um so it's the same with with art or anything you're buying online most people for anything they're doing and think about yourself not just art when you go to buy something you do research online before you ever physically go to that store so i think when we're talking about buying online that's even more important than the just click the ship it to me uh, is that the tools are all there for you to to narrow it down and get the information. Uh, and it's there 24 seven. So there's nothing not to trust. I'm not making anything up. <laughs> yeah. That's the used car sales person. <laughs> um, uh, Gina, do you have anything to add about what you're saying to your customers or uh, are, were, were you also a used car salesman? We, you know, this is all coming out now. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. But... <laughs> <laughs> no. no, I think you're, uh, you're, you're an art, uh, an art grad. You're a, I can't remember, Alberta Art College? I started at NASCAD, actually. I was saying earlier before yes. we went online that that looks just like my apartment behind uh, Cheryl there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, so, um, yeah. Do you, sorry? Do you have any anything else to add to what to the others have said to what you're telling? Well, I think it's just, well, for me, actually, I don't do direct e-commerce on my website. People actually have to, to email me once they've, they've picked out their purchase on my website. I, I may get that set up, but at the moment I don't have it. I, but I do consider it still selling online, just selling through, um, just having the work available to view online. But I do try to keep that personal connection by either having them call me or having them email me and deal with them, deal with people directly. So I do actually talk to everybody that that buys something. And I mean, for me, I don't I don't want to sell you something you don't want. I'm not looking to do that. I I want to. I'll go through everything I've got in my storeroom if you want until we find exactly the right piece. Like I'm not looking to, to make a quick sale because I'm, I want repeat customers. I want to sell you something again later. And if you go home unhappy, you're not coming back. And if you feel like you've been pressured into buying something, you're not coming back. So I'm not, I'm not interested in that kind of sales. Yeah, that makes sense. That's good advice. Are you all finding that there are more people, like more people are buying online? Have you seen an uptick in, in this? Definitely. Um, so I was, I was already set up online before all, everything happened, um, but it definitely increased things because I think people that wouldn't necessarily have Pulled that trigger before did because they didn't have an option and and some of them were sitting at home and had to get their fix they really had to do it we we all love those people but they have to buy the art you know and we're here to help with that we're enablers but uh, yeah no i think it definitely has increased and then i was talking before about it's not just the the e-commerce or the click and ship it to me um i would say if i had to guess of art that I've sold, I'd say 80% of the pieces I've sold, people have seen it on my website or Instagram or Facebook before they bought it. They've come to the gallery and buy it and they come and look at other things or they might come and try it in their house, but the first place they saw it was online, 80% at least. Yeah, digitally, the the poll, the, the current poll that's up right now, um, uh, what's your favorite thing about buying art online is that I could shop anytime. So 50% of the people. Um, and then next is the more selection. And then uh, tied with that is that it's art, it's, it's shipped directly to me. So there is um, 
so there's benefits, you know, for, for the consumer now, which is like, you know, those things are so handy and you all have adapted so well and so quickly, um, which is really quite, quite remarkable. Um, uh, are, are you selling, um, are you getting new customers that you've never um, engaged with before during this time? Yeah, some new customers for sure are shopping online, but a lot of the online sales are, are people that I have dealt with in the past. And I mean, I know for me, um, because we go to Art Toronto every year and I have a lot of um, clients that, you know, don't live locally in Saskatchewan, um, all the changes that I've made in the last few months has made it much easier for them to keep track of what I'm doing and what's happening in the gallery. And so I've increased my sales outside of the province quite a bit. In the last I, I think that's a big thing too, is that we are, you know, Saskatchewan, Halifax, Nanaimo, um, a lot of these online sales are going to places, like I shipped two pieces to Oregon this week. Uh, I shipped a mug to Australia. You know, like these are all things that if they weren't online or available that way, you know, they wouldn't exist. I bought a piece this summer from Jones Gallery in New, New Brunswick, New Brunswick. Um, so again, it's, it is the convenience. And, and if I didn't know about the, the artist through websites, things like that, I wouldn't have ever made that purchase. So again, like our website, because Cheryl's right, when somebody comes in and they're like, so I'd like to see this and this and this and this, I'm like, yeah. And you like <laughs> the back and you like grab it because I always say like check our website like use our resources and like we call those art parties when they come in and they've done their work and you're just like here we go you just want to lock the door so no tire kickers come in you're just like we're gonna just do this us because you did your work and I'm I'm here <laughs> for you. <laughs> Ah, good. And so you're all having, you're still having your uh, exhibition schedules and they've moved. Um, so they're either online or you're also doing uh, physical and online. What's happening there for people who are looking at the sites there and they know that there's still exhibitions coming up or how's it working now? Yeah, I'm still doing exhibitions every month, um, just opening them without a reception and uh, doing the on online tours, but um, the doors are still open. People can come in and see the show in person anytime. Um, our numbers in Saskatchewan are much lower than other parts of the country, so it's not as big of a risk. But um, and I've, I've actually changed my hours a little bit. I've shortened them a little bit, but I have lengthened my avail availability. So now I'm open by appointment Monday, Tuesday, and then open the rest of the week till Saturday and closed on Sunday. So. If people do want that experience of the privacy in the gallery and they want to know that no one else is going to be there, they can book an appointment on my website and I will meet them at the gallery at the, and they can have a place to themselves. So that's a, I think some people find that it should be a bit of a bonus as well. Yeah, that is a bonus. It's, and it's, it's more private and it's very, it's very, it is a, it's an intimate experience buying art. And mm -hmm. I know, Gina, for you during, um, you know, the shift that happened that you started doing the 3D tours, is it something that you're going to keep doing? Like this is, is this a, a now a, a part of your stable of, of what you do to promote your gallery and artists? As long as it's working, I'll keep doing it. Yeah. Sure. Do you get good feedback from your customers on the 3D tours? What do they say about it? Oh, I get emails from people, especially from farther away, that are really excited to be able to, um, especially, I had one recently from someone who used to live here, and she moved to um, Ontario just before, just before March. So getting that experience of being able to come in and visit the gallery virtually has been great for her because she's, you know, she's in a new space and not able to experience it and explore it. So it was, it was nice to have an opportunity to, to check in with her and and see how she's been how she's been viewing everything that's pretty cool um uh so the the uh the second poll is up um let's see uh just is it but it was uh, a lot of it was trending towards uh most people the majority of purchases being two-dimensional over three-dimensional um is that um is that consistent with you know uh pre-2020 events um, or, is, or is there more of a shift to two-dimensional? What are you all seeing? Well, I, I have majority two-dimensional, so I can't really 
comment on that. That's I mean, that's a bit of sculpture, but uh, most of my sculpture is really, really large, so I don't actually encourage people from far away from buying that. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, how about you, Joe? I kind, kind of same boat. Uh, I have one artist that does big rock sculptures, and I'm. I was terrified when I announced $25 shipping anywhere in Canada this summer. <laughs> I was like, oh dear God. And only one person pulled the trigger on, on one of his sculptures. So it's, it's a lot of work. You have to get it custom created and all that. And I think this guy like almost was like, you said $25 shipping. So I'm <laughs> yeah. So we lost some money on that purchase, but yeah. <laughs> the artist still got paid. Um, <laughs> Yeah, like I said earlier, I love shipping jewelry. I love <laughs> things. I, we, we had a piece this summer that um, I brought in a piece that was seven and a half feet by nine feet. And I, I knew it, but then when it came into the gallery, the reality hit me. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this is huge. I'm a very, I'm a small gallery. And there was an, a client in Victoria that kind of like what we've been talking about. She's like, I'm interested in it. I think, I think I like it. I think I've got the space for it. And because I love what I do so much, we rented a 20 foot U-Haul. We packed that nine foot painting <laughs> into the U-Haul. We drove it to Victoria, got to the house and she's like, I hope it fits. I was like, you told me you measured. <laughs> and it just, it just barely fit. And she's like, yeah, I think it's gonna work. And I was like, oh my God, thank God. Because that, <laughs> that was a mission, like to, to move a piece for me that big was full on. So again, like we love what we do. And sometimes we take these risks um, to, to, to make the sale happen. And we truly will, like that was kind of jumping through hoops. And we're happy to do that for anyone that's you know, like we're saying, like nervous about purchasing online and all that. I will put it in a U-Haul and I will drive it to you, <laughs> you know? Like we're here, like make us work for it. Again, these are luxury items. These are expensive items. And so don't be afraid to ask all the questions. Like at the end of the day, you know, if, if, if it's super tiring dealing with someone, you just pick up a bottle of wine that night and you move on because you made the sale, but, and they're happy. So make, make us work is kind of what I'm saying is, yeah. I'm not bringing in any more seven and a half by nine foot painting for a while though. <laughs> that was too much. Well, I, if we're talking um, large pieces, I am going to move to Gina Fafard because Gina, like what is the biggest piece that, and, it, and not just over the past, you know, eight months, but what is, what's the biggest piece you've ever sold and had to ship? Oh, uh, it was one of Joe, Joe Preferred's um, bronze horses, and it shipped out to um, Burnaby, BC. It's now standing in front of the library there. Oh, cool. How much, how big was it? Like, how is that, we're talking tons then, aren't we? Well, it's a full-size horse, so um, probably a ton, maybe just under. Exactly, oh, I didn't have to be here. The shipping company did it. It was easy. It was easy. <laughs> Yeah, so, so it's well, okay. Because I'm, I'm close by and uh, Phil, who's actually my cousin, who has always run Joe's Foundry, um, he would take care of packing it up on this end. It, it's quite simple to do. The Joe's sculptures are all threaded on the bottom, so you bolt them down to a pallet and then you load them into the truck. And so, yeah. Oh, easy. I'm wondering if the hesitation over right. buying something three-dimensional is about, you know, is about will it break or something like that but you all like and i've worked with phil phil's amazing um mm -hmm. uh is is maybe that's part of their hesitation is oh gee maybe that's harder but really um you take uh, you take good care over it doesn't matter the the size if it's one of the bees in the background there with you know joe i think that's bradshaw is that kathy bradshaw, kathy bradshaw um, yeah so you Do take just as good care yeah yeah even things like encaustic like what gina was saying is um, winter time, I have to be super cautious about shipping uh, anywhere that's not Vancouver Island that actually has winter because encaustics can't get cold, you know? So again, we work that all out because we have shipping companies that have the temperature controlled um, 
trucks and all that stuff. So again, but those are all things that we're aware of. Like I would never ship that just to Canada Post, especially with how things are being delivered nowadays, potentially in December to Edmonton, because if it gets left on the front doorstep. But again, like Cheryl said, that's all on us. Don't get stressed out, let us stress out. Yeah. Sure enough, I'm gonna um, say to Alana, Alana, do you feel like I don't know if you can put a poll together quickly about to see if people are more comfortable um, purchasing art online based on what they heard today? Just yes or no. And if you can't do it, Alana's uh, on the keyboards here, you can't see her, but she's in the background making it work. Um, so to our gallerists, is, um, are there is there anything else that you wish that you I had asked today um, that you want uh, customers to know? Or do we cover mm -hmm. it all? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, a big thank, thank you. you. I, yeah, thank you. I mean, in general, but I mean, these have been tough, scary times. And, uh, you know, Joe sort of said at the, at the beginning too, but there was a, um, a few weeks where I couldn't even come to the gallery. I was too sad because I didn't know if I'd ever open the doors again. But then uh, very quickly, and I'm going to do it now, I'm going to cry, but there was some very happy tears. We had a show opening in April and the artists had worked on this show for over a year and it was a very heartfelt personal show and all of a sudden it wasn't going to happen i said listen we're going to do it we're just gonna i'm going to go in the gallery i'm going to hang it i'm going to take pictures i'm going to take videos and um within days i had a phone call from a client in california about three of them we ended, it was, ended up being one of our more successful shows and every time i called the artist we we cried we literally cried so Thank you. There's real people, <laughs> you know, not just us, but the uh, the artists and their families. And there was a lot of happy tears. So, so thank you for adapting with us. <laughs> yeah. Um, Joe, Gina, there's, there's a, I have a few more questions, so we're not done yet here, but um, I, I want to make sure that all the things you're hoping to say today, um, that you, could, you had space to say them. Is there anything else you'd like to share before I go into my last little pieces here? I'll jump in first, Gina. I think when we were talking before, um, we, we have to do this online format in, in, in ways to keep going. But one thing that's really important is that if you love a gallery and if you love what that gallery does and if you love what uh, they stand for, purchase artwork so that we're here when we can all get past this stupid virus pandemic mayhem ridiculousness because w the beauty of going into a gallery like in my gallery i have a sign that says we're a covid talk free gallery because this is your escape it's right in the middle of the gallery it's ta -ta -ta. we are a covid talk free gallery because i like it right like it. yeah this is your escape like and so when people come in and if it's positive talk about COVID, I'm like, no problem. Like if they want to see how I'm adapting, sure. But as soon as it's like dark and depressing, I'm like, you just came into an art gallery. This is the escape. It's like going to the theater. You get to leave everything that's in your life at the door and you get to escape. And so our little pieces of paradise need to be here for when we can all get back to normal whatever that means. And so making these art purchases are important right now, you know, and this isn't like me being like, oh, help us out. Just get behind us, you know, do, do what we're doing. Those online shows that I'm doing, I love them more than the shows I used to do. <laughs> and people are like, how can you say that? Come on, the, the art gallery that's been around for, for ages, but I'm just getting so behind them that I actually, like, I love them. Sometimes I, all the work that would go into some of those other shows and you got your wine and you've got this and you're getting a DJ and all this stuff. And then at the end of it, you just like crumble. This new format, I'm like, party! After it's done, I'm like, it's such a rush. Like the phone's ringing, we're putting red dots on things. I don't know. I think it's such a silver lining and I, I, I almost like this more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gina, you, thank you, Joe. Gina, you were gonna say something. Oh, I was, but I also wanted to say that, um, you know, 
don't buy art online just to support us or to support the artists do it for yourself because you know we're all spending more time at home now you know there's not a lot of opportunity to travel um you know it's going to be a long winter i think you want to improve your home as much as you can and, and enjoy it and 100 percent yeah right. um we just polled are you more comfortable with buying art online after this session we've got 89 percent yes um, and uh, one, uh, there's a little bit, someone like, I'd like a little bit more information. So for the person I'd say who needs a little bit more information, I'd probably say, talk to your gallerist and ask whatever question, because it, you, you're, you'll field whatever it, it takes. Is that right? But it sounds like we've, you know, this has really helped people. So that's good. I'm going to, um, there I go, share the results. So that's exciting. Um, I'll do a little quick speed round and here, there's two more things left uh, before I do the, uh, the ending. And the, what it is is a little speed round and then I'm also gonna ask people what caught their eye in our gallerists here. So um, I don't know how the speed round's gonna work. Maybe just shout it out. Um, Instagram or Facebook? Instagram. Facebook. Both. <laughs> Both, okay. <laughs> uh, white wine or red wine? Red. Red. Bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the farthest away that you've had a customer on the on this fine earth. Tobago. Uh, where was it? Where Tobago. Is it? Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago. Wow. Mine is Isle of Man. Where is that? <laughs> it's like this tiny island off Scotland. It was the most stressful shipping thing I'd ever gone through. Isle of Man, of all places. <laughs> I made the sale and then I said, I'll deal with this afterwards. And then I found out it's really hard to ship there. <laughs> uh, Gina, farthest of there. <laughs> um, Mine is in Saudi Arabia, but we haven't quite got the shipping sorted yet. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. you're gonna get there. <laughs> That's pretty fun. Uh, Okay. Uh, zodiac sign. Guess. Oh, oh <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I, I don't know. Virgo. Gemini. <laughs> okay. Oh, only a Gemini would say that. <laughs> Joe. Scorpio. Scorpio. Gina. Sagittarius. Sagittarius. All right. Like my mom. I'm an Aries. So this is great. Um, okay, and then the last piece um, that um, if there aren't any more, if there, is there are any questions, you know, for the people who are viewing, post your question. Well, you've got people right now who are um, selling online in all different ways. And that's why, you know, we put to this group together. So you just go to the bottom of the screen to your Q&A and type it in. Um, okay, but the last, uh, doesn't look like there's any questions. So that's all right. Um, before I do the last piece, I'm gonna talk about that the Art Now Fine Art Fair is continuing online until the 27th of September. And it's also in, I'm just looking at, I've got my notes. It's also uh, on location on the 25th and 26th. Is that right, Gina, in Regina here? Yes. Yep. And, uh, and also there's another session tomorrow, um, Art in Isolation. It's about the, um, the focus booth and it's, it's artists who have been creating during this isolation time. So it's, a, it's dedicated to that and they're gonna be talking about that. So that's, that's tomorrow, uh, Sunday, 1 p.m. Um, for artists. It's gonna be hosted by um, um, Marnie. Uh, oh, oh, she's great. You're gonna have a great time. Um, and let's see, but so keep shopping online with artnow.ca. And uh, let's see, now before we close out our session, I, anything, I'm, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna ask the gallerists to hold up or show what caught their eye today. What is bringing you joy today visually? And we'll all hold it up and we're all gonna, we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> we don't know what we're gonna hold up. <laughs> it's gonna be a surprise and hold it up for a good, you know, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, wait, we'll wait. Hmm. Gina's coming back. Okay. Oh, okay. And, oh, that's fun. Okay. Gina, what are you holding up? What artist is that? Maya Stark. Oh, yeah. That's gorge. My most recent purchase. What's that? My most recent purchase. Oh, nice. Okay, Joe, how about yours? 
Uh, this is Lola's Lipstick by uh, mixed media artist Trisha Oldfield, who lives here uh, on Vancouver Island. And I think it's fabulous. That is fabulous. <laughs> Cheryl Bell from 14 Bells. Well, I have a few things, and I, I just saw this for the first time now, too, because I have an event going on night, right now called Paint the Hydrostone, where I have, it's a plein air event that's the fourth year that we've done it. Uh, so artists were outside today. We have a couple of good days before a hurricane is supposed to hit us on Tuesday. Um, so, yeah, artist Stephen Toth just created this piece outside this afternoon. I had hoped to show you out the window. I can show you the park, but there's nobody there now. They've gone home. They, the lights are off in the rest of the gallery right now. Okay. But, um, okay, yeah, show us. That's our park. Oh. That's your park. So that's where people were painting today. You had an event on. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, I have here, which is one of my favorites. As you see, it's a Zachary Logan. He's a Saskatchewan artist, and it is uh, did actually purchase it from our Slate Gallery. That's backwards, but you can get it. Um, I love Zachary Logan, and I wish I had bought him even like two years earlier when I had the instinct. Because I just loved him, and I and then I second guessed myself. Um, anyway, in the Hez show, and actually, when I purchased that piece, it was talking to Gina, and Gina telling me the story of um, Zachary, and, and in the it was in the National Gallery in um, London, and that was one of his studies. Is that did I get that right, Gina? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so Gina told me the story of the piece, and then all of a sudden, it was just so alive, and. Anyway, I have that my it's a I have that in my home in a primo spot, and that's my favorite. So uh, I think I think we've covered a lot. I wanna I wanna say a big thank you to uh, the people, the participants who are here, who asked the questions, answered uh, the polls, and and helped us out that way. That's really great. And to you, the gallerists, um, for you know, so Joe at you know Gallery Merrick, um, Cheryl Bell at Fourteen Bells, and Gina from State Gallery, um, you know, we we they spent a lot of time preparing for this, and we talked earlier this week. So big thank you. Here's my virtual hug. Here's my virtual hug. Um, so thanks for that. And thanks to SAS Galleries and Art Now. And I want to say thanks to um, Alana, um, who's been on the keyboards. And Jennifer, who've been on the keyboards as well, because they're making this whole thing work. So should we do like a high five on the screen or something or side to side? <laughs> Let's do high five on the screen. Say, okay, well done. All right. And thank you. You are all so great and have a great day. And uh, keep shopping on artnow.ca because there's a lot of incredible art on there. And I've already Thanks, bought Frida. a few. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Frida. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.